What's up guys, welcome back to yet some more reddit stories about entitled people, crazy people, and everything in between. So be sure to subscribe for more reddit content if you haven't already and let's get into today's stories. Neighbors shed encroaches on our property, preventing us from building our house. My dad owns a vacant but desirable property in New York, neither of us currently reside there. He is passing the property along to me so I can build a house to live there. It took about 10k for him to get the title cleaned up with the lawyer. Last spring I had a survey done that showed the neighbor's shed encroaches on the property by about 7 feet. Setback is 12 feet, so needs to move around 19 feet back. The neighbor even said to my surveyor that my dad, quote, should just sell him the land. With this encroachment, my dad is unable to pass along a clean title to me. And without a clean title, I'm not able to secure a home building loan. I was going to work with the neighbor to amicably remove the shed, but he swiftly blocked my number and didn't answer his door when I was in town last August. I looked into the town codes and the penalty for the violation is $100 a week. He also does not have a permit for this shed, which is necessary per the town's code of any structure over 120 square feet requiring a permit. Since I didn't live there, I got the city involved. The building inspector told him to remove the shed from our property. Neighbor ignored and refused for about five months. Then the building inspector had the city attorney write him a letter in January, giving him 60 days to respond. The inspector has not given us a copy of the letter. We've requested it multiple times now, so I'm unsure of what all was said in the letter. I've also requested that the inspector enforces the penalties, as well as an injunction to padlock his shed for further use. Those requests were ignored as well. We didn't hear back for about 90 days from the neighbor after the attorney's letter, but he agreed to move the shed. Woohoo, right? He then said we need to get surveyors to pin where he should move his shed, so he doesn't have to do it twice. We have three different surveys of the property, and there are pins at each corner. I called our surveyor and it would be $700 to mark where he should move the shed. I felt that I shouldn't be responsible for getting his shed into compliance. This is his violation and I've been patiently waiting and delaying an entire year. I don't care if he isn't within the full means of the 12-foot setback. He just needs it off my property to appease me at this point. Initially, I was willing to get the surveyor out again and pay for it. But my concern is that if we do that, he's still not going to move it in a timely manner and keep moving the goalposts for us. Neighbor even said it would take 5 months after we pinned the property. I don't know why he thinks it will take 5 months to move the shed. I called around and got a quote from Shed Movers. One said they could do it next week for $575. I've got a lawyer in my back pocket who will be my last ditch effort. It's expensive. A letter alone will be $1,500 and will take a long time so I don't love that idea. He said we could do a revocable license for the bit of land, but I'm not going to give the neighbor anything at this point. I want to put up a driveway and definitely a fence there now too, so I'll need that land. At this point, I understand why my neighbor is being a jerk. He wants to get away with whatever he can. But I can't understand why the building inspector is letting him get away with everything. Why no penalties? Why no injunctions? He was very unhappy when I called the town clerk and asked for more information because the inspector doesn't answer mine. He's been so ineffective on this and it's having real repercussions for us. We're renting in a high cost of living area that we don't like and would love to have made progress this year to move ASAP. The neighbor should have racked up at least $4,400 in penalties so far and an additional 2 k for the 5 months he wants to tack on. I feel like that would invoke actual pressure for him to move it, right? So that first part was originally posted about 2 months ago and now we just got an update. So a few weeks back I went to Home Depot and we bought a Sawzall. We went to the neighbor's property in the middle of the night and... No, not really. For all you burn it downers and saws all it sayers, my attorney said by no means do anything like that. He said, do not touch it in any way ever. So thank you to everyone for the solid and rational advice of talking to attorneys, and as frustrating as it is, utilizing our government resources as recounted below. So I escalated this with the town and bothered them to no end. I got all the way up to the town supervisor and he was very frustrated on my behalf. I told him I've been dealing with this situation for a year, that the neighbor has been told to move the shed by the inspector and town attorney, that I've already had three surveys of the land to prove the encroachment, and that the property is properly demarcated with pins. 
He asked why the building inspector was having yet another surveyor go out there, and said he would just have someone measure where the shed needs to be moved using the survey. He said he will personally get involved in this and will give neighbor one week to get his shed moved. I get a call back with him later that day with the junior building inspector, taking direction from the senior inspector while he's out of town, on the line, and womp womp, he totally changes his tune. He said I have to get a surveyor to go out there to pin the property line again, but specifically next to the shed. He could never answer me why it was my responsibility to pin a specific spot on my property for a shed that shouldn't exist there in the first place, solely for the benefit of the neighbor figuring out how far back to move his shed to get it into compliance. I'm fuming now and I also figured out that the senior inspector forgot that I had sent him the third survey showing the encroachment in the spring, which should have began the penalty violations. He also didn't provide that to the neighbor who needed it and had been asking for it. He just thought I didn't need to provide the survey. Even the junior inspector was embarrassed and frustrated for his lack of help and thoroughness with my case. My dad's an engineer and comes up with an idea that we present to the junior inspector. We'll use the shed as the property line pin to mark the setback for the neighbor. The shed is shown on the survey and we can see where the property line crosses through the shed, so we just need to measure and mark those places in real life. It's stupidly simple and similar to an idea I mentioned months ago about measuring the setback from the shed, but they approved it. I used the survey's CAD files to set up the measurements for where to pin the property line and 6-foot setback lines. In my last post, the setbacks were at 12 feet, but changed at some point that month. Another piece of important information that the building inspector forgot to mention to me. So when my dad and husband went out to go mark the shed using the line of sight, they met up with the neighbor and he was so unbelievably nice. Mind you, we've all been blocked, ignored, had our no trespassing signs taken down, and been told in the past that we should just sell him the property. Now he's making friends with my husband giving him a tour of his house, talking scotch, sharing contractor info with him, etc. I'm baffled hearing this and don't trust it, but welcome it for the moment. Then my husband tells me the neighbor's wife is rude to him and pissed that we didn't get the additional survey, didn't like that we were doing it this way, etc. The neighbor hushes her and she goes off to pout the rest of the day. My theory is that maybe the wife is the one doing all the blocking and snagging this up, the neighbor apparently had a heart attack earlier this year, so I wonder if she took over his communications. When this first started last year, they mentioned that they tried to buy our property so their son could live on it. Apparently, it's just her son, his stepson. I think she drove some of this conflict and he may be giving it up, or just changing his tune after his heart attack. Ever since then, he's been friendly towards us, which I'm relieved about. So after the pinning of the property line and marking the six-foot setback, the building inspector approved our work and then gave the neighbor another month to get this scheduled with a mover and finally moved. After about a month and a half, I didn't hear from the inspector, so we gave the town a call. It had been moved. We went forward with our final survey to confirm that our land is clear of encroachments. It's cleared, but neighbor only moved it 3.6 feet off the property line, short of the six-foot setback. What the actual f***? I got a letter today from the building inspector saying he passed it and the case is officially closed. I absolutely do not care that it's only 3.6 feet back instead of 6. I'm just glad he's off my land and can now move forward. But seriously? I don't know how this got approved, but I'm in awe of the incompetence of the inspector. I guess I'll just have to see what all I can get away with too. Anyways, that's my shed saga. Thanks for reading. It's almost comical how after all that and the neighbor finally agreeing to move it, he doesn't even do it right and it's still technically not in compliance with the setback. Just complete incompetence all around. Not even just with the neighbor too, but also with the building inspector who's failing to enforce the rules that it's their job to enforce. And after a year of fighting for this, that's the result? It's one of those situations where you can't help but just throw your hands up and say, well, good enough, I guess. At the very least, OP can actually start building their house now. Weird lady accuses me of shoplifting a burnt out bulb. I had a light bulb that blew. It was black and smoky looking inside, so I unscrewed it and brought it with me to the hardware store, as that is generally the best way of getting the correct replacement. 
in the area with the shopping carts under cover before you actually enter the store. I pulled it out of my purse, set my purse in the cart, and then with the light bulb in my right hand while pushing the cart by leaning on it with my forearms, I started slowly making my way through the store, figuring I would see what fall decorations they had out, and if there was any random home decor or cleaning supplies or end-of-year barbecue sale items I couldn't live without. After a while, I noticed a guy following me and trying to act casual. I don't know why, but I was pretty sure he was loss prevention. So being the upfront gal I am, I flat out ask, are you loss prevention? He stammers and admits it and says someone saw me shoplifting and putting something in my purse. I am bemused more than anything, so I point to my open bag, a purse that I didn't bother zipping and which only had a small zipper pocket inside that holds maybe a lip gloss and a feminine product, and my wallet which is thin and could really only hold my cards and maybe some cash, and told him, you can check, I don't care. He sheepishly peeks inside and then says something like, you're good, sorry. I can't help myself so I ask, what exactly did I steal? That lady down there. He nodded towards the end of the aisle where a lady was parked staring at us. Said she saw you open up a light bulb and put it in your purse. I couldn't really think of anything to say, so I just held out my burned out bulb and said, I haven't even gotten over to look at the bulbs yet. I was shopping around first. I brought this in to make sure I got the right one. He rolled his eyes and said something like, I get it. Do you need me to get anyone to help you find the product you were looking for? I told him no and continued shopping. The lady seemed to be irritated that I wasn't arrested, or at least forced to dump out my bags so she followed me around the store. Whereas the loss prevention fellow had been trying to be subtle, she was not. She kept about two shopping cart lengths back and stared at me. I did my best to ignore her. I would pick things up, read the packaging, and then put it back, as I am wont to do. And then she would pick it up after I moved on and inspect it, as if she would discover an empty box or something. I was irritated, but I tracked down the bulb I needed. I made a point of holding my smoky and obviously burnt out light next to fresh clean bulbs until I found what I wanted, but then put that one back and chose out the same bulb, but a different brand for slightly cheaper. I went to check out and while I waited in line, I saw her at customer service pointing at me urgently. Someone came over and asked how my shopping went. I just held out my open bag and made a point of showing that it was completely empty, since I had pulled my wallet to pay. I stood like that, not saying anything until the employee apologized and left. So that's it. I didn't see the lady actually shopping. She followed me like a hawk and tried to convince the store, twice, that I had stolen items in my purse. What was the reason? I actually wouldn't blame her if she misunderstood the bulb was mine and mentioned it to an employee. But she lied and said she saw me open it and stick it in my purse? And then she wasted at least a half hour following me around, staring at me and fondling the items I put back on the shelf. What the actual hell? And that's going to be it for today, friends. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, if you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Reddit shenanigans. So take care and I'll see you next time.